Hello, welcome back. This is Frederick from Tech Nordic. Today I'm going to take you to a journey how to use the digital channels on our MSO 5 and MSO 6 series, which is a great additional feature. By the way, if you want to see how it looks like, it looks like this. This is the probe. It's a TLP058. So it takes one of the analog channels and turn it into eight digital channels. So of course, if you have an eight channel scope, you will be able to have up to 64 digital channels. I will now start playing around with this one. We're going to do some settings. We're going to remove. So just follow on. First thing I will do is I go in here and I will right click and I will configure channel one. And we call this Tech Nordic. Nordic. And this is actually what's going to be down here. We don't use 7.6, we use 5.4. This is going to be USB positive, USB negative. We're not going to use 3, we're going to use 2, which is a, a 40 megahertz clock. And we're not going to use D1 and this one. So this is the setup I'm, I'm doing today because I have some ideas around this crazy 40 megahertz clock. clock. So once that is done, you can imagine you can have a lot of channels. So, and the toggle rate for this one is 500 megahertz, and it goes up to plus minus 40 uh, volts each of the pins. So, we're going to change this one. This this needs to be 500 millivolt. What I know. Enter. We take the next one. 500 millivolt. Enter. We leave this as is. Okay, I think we're good. So the first thing I will do now is, is create the bus because I need to set up making sure that the USB is really working. I had some issues in the previous video. This is actually trial number two now, making sure it works. So first of all, if you want to replace a logic analyzer, uh, there's some features you want to have. And one of the things is running this as a parallel bus. You can imagine if you had 64 channels. In this case, I still have the eight analog channels and I have the eight digital, and you can just add those all together and build up something really nice, like this. Uh, and yeah, if I stop this one and I click in here, you can see, you know, see the words. But we're not gonna use a parallel today. We're actually gonna use it for USB. So we go into the USB, find it. And this is a single-ended full, yeah. And I think D plus is uh, number five. You see this number five and the negative is number four i think this is what we said and then we run it and we probably need some more time that's it now you can see that there's something here of course we're not triggering very well and there's a way to do triggering so we can instead of the source uh here we can have the bus uh, uh, you know and it seems to be working now in terms of triggering so what i will do now is just turn this off I will go up here, uh, uh, double click, and uh, go up here and, uh, and configure. And I will turn off this one. We don't need to see this one. So we're going to concentrate a little bit on the 40 megahertz clock. So here we are. We're going to change the trigger. Trigger should be on edge on D2, which is my problem clock. And you can see it's jittering around a little bit. What I'm going to do now is two things. I'm going to do a measure. Uh, and we drag it down like this. Here I'm going to make sure that I select the D2. I'm going to measure frequency and I'm going to measure positive pulse. Width. These are the measurements in the beginning. I also have a, a, a trick here if you want to sh make sure that you had the threshold right uh, set to the right thing. It's making sure that you, you don't have like an overshoot and undershoot in the system causing it to, to be in one and zero in the wrong place. So you go for pulse width. And then, of course, as, as always on scopes, put it into normal. Auto mode I is meant to show you updates on screen, even if it's not triggering. So here we can see that we have something. And if we measure the positive pulse width here, double click this one, I can show that we have a minimum 160 picosecond. Makes no sense for 40 megahertz clock. So I'm going to tweak this a little bit until it stops triggering. So I go in here and I will just move this up to maybe 1.5 volt. Hopefully it's gone. Yeah. What I do now is uh, another thing. I will move this time limit up a little bit until we have a stable trigger again. It's stable. And then I'm going to move down until it's not that stable anymore. So triggering 
randomly like once a second. I will give it a little bit more time. And now I will take this measurement we did here, the uh, frequency. I will also add some statistics, but I will show a time trend of this one. We'll go into the time trend and I will not auto scale. I would like to add a fixed scale like 2.6. So here we can see that randomly my clock goes up like from 40 megahertz and then woo all the way up to 56 and down here and all the way down back again. And this is happening during a very, very short window of time. So if I add these cursors here, uh, we can place one cursor over here and we can place another cursor over here. And we can say that, you know, for 439 nanoseconds, this is, this is happening for some reason, which I don't know. I right click and turn the cursors off. What I want to do now is to see the how frequent does this happen? Is it once a second or once uh, or more often? So I will go in, I will put this into single. I will use what we call a fast frame and I'll put the frames to, to 10 of them and I will hit single. But this down now is, is waiting for these kind of events and just grab them as they come and we fill our memory so we can make sure that we capture them. And this is a good first step to find errors in the system. If they're repetitive, I'm sure you can figure out why. But in this case, you will soon see it's not repetitive. But I have an idea and let's see if, if I'm right. I think it's the USB that causes this. I'm not sure. But after we acquired 10 of them, we can go through the frames one and two and three. We can see they look the same. We have the possibility here to look at frequency. I can click it once. I can find the min one, which is on frame number six. Zoom this a little bit and we can zoom out a little bit like this. Here it is. And we can look that that was the min, I guess. And where's the maximum frequency? It's on number seven. It's 15 seconds later. So it's kind of all over the place. If I go down with this one, I double click this one, I can have a timestamp, time trend. And this gives me, you know, an interesting information. Add curses to this one. So we can see, you know, the first one was at one second after the original trigger. Second, so people ask me, why is it zero here? It's actually the f start. So everything in terms of timing comes from the first one. And then we can see up here, we go like uh, six seconds. And the last one, I think, is uh, almost uh, eight seconds. So it's all over the place in terms of timing. What I will do now is add another measurement. I will add a measurement on this one uh, to find peak to peak. And I will add it. I can get some statistics. The peak to peak, there's number of tens. If I click this one, uh, I couldn't do that now. Oh, sorry. And the peak to is 17. Sorry for that, Se 17 megahertz. Now I will turn on my bus because I do believe there's something hidden here. So I turn the bus on and look. I was expecting that during this error, my USB would have been active. Yes, it's active here in frame number four, but it's not even active on frame number three. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you ever run into something and do something, uh, this is a good way for you to be able to build a logic analyzer light out of our scope. Think about it, 64 channels, 500 megahertz toggle rate and unlimited measurement capabilities. I just love this. Enjoy your day. Thank you.